In today's lecture, we're going to continue exploring the evolution of the size scale of the universe. And last time, we sketched out a rough evolution for A of T versus T. We said that for K equals zero, we would have a solution for A of T that would expand with time and um, it would come to a stop after infinite time. So V equals zero after infinite time. If K equals plus one, we saw that corresponds to a universe that is closed. And uh, it would eventually halt the expansion and then turn around and collapse. And for k is equal to minus one, we found that the expansion would continue. And even after infinite time, it would not come to a stop. And these correspond to energy densities of less than one. So this is the energy density with respect to the critical energy density. And this one is, by definition, the critical density. And this one is an energy density uh, being greater than one. So that's a rough understanding of how the uh, cos cosmological scale A behaves as a function of time in three possible uh, scenarios. I would like to highlight that it's really important to recognize that this ignores the cosmological constant lambda. The evolution is more complicated when you include lambda. We'll get that to that a little later. All right, so let's let's be specific in terms of an evolution. So let's use the Friedman equation. to give us a solution for A of T in a specific case. And we're gonna choose a specific case that I know gives us an analytic solution to this. And so this one case is called the Einstein de Sitter universe. So the Einstein de Sitter universe is one in which k is equal to zero and we're dealing with a matter dominated universe. Matter dominated universe. Okay, so if we're dealing with a matter dominated universe, then the energy density is given completely by the matter. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna ex, um, write down how the energy density scales with A, not with time, but A. And so from our previous lecture, we derive the energy equation, the evolution for the energy density, uh, epsilon dot is equal to minus three A dot over A times the pressure plus the energy density. And we have that the pressure is equal to W times epsilon. And when we put this in, we get a solution for epsilon is proportional to A to the minus three times W plus one. So if you don't remember how we uh, derived that solution, I encourage you to go back and look at it at the previous lecture in which we covered that. All right, so for matter, W is equal to zero. And so that gives us a solution of epsilon is proportional to 
a to the minus three. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this uh, proportionality relationship into an inequality. Uh, so the energy density is equal to the energy density today, that's what the naught means, times a naught divided by a cubed. So anything that scales as a to the minus three, this is how we're gonna turn it into um, the energy density for today. So we have these unknowns, epsilon naught and a naught. All right, we'll set that aside for the moment. Okay, now we have k equals zero and we're gonna plug this into the Friedman equation. I'll abbreviate this way. All right, and the Friedman equation then gives if k is equal to zero, a dot over a squared equals eight pi g epsilon over three c squared. All right, we have our expression for epsilon, and we have another expression that connects epsilon and A. We're gonna combine these two and find an evolution for A versus time. Before we do that, I'm going to, I'm going to anticipate um, some parameters that will help us simplify how we do this calculation. So first of all, I will note that this equation, A dot over A squared, is equal to h squared. So a dot over a is h. This is h. And this equation is valid for all time. So I can help define the, the scale of um, the expansion with today's expansion. So in other words, h naught squared is equal to eight pi g epsilon naught over three c squared. So I'm just taking this equation, which I know is valid at all time, and I'm putting in values for today, and I get this relationship between h naught and epsilon naught. And so if I solve this, I have that epsilon naught is equal to h naught squared times three C squared over eight pi G. Now, why did I do this? Well, epsilon naught is not very easy to measure, whereas H naught is an observation that is easy to measure. So all we're really doing is we're replacing one parameter, epsilon naught, uh, for another one, H naught. That's what we're doing, is we're gonna rewrite our equation in terms of H naught, which is something that is more easily measurable. All right, if I plug this into, uh, so this epsilon naught into this equation, epsilon equals epsilon naught, and then I then take that equation and I plug it into Friedman equation, I will get a slightly simpler expression for the Friedman equation in the Einstein de Sitter universe. And it is a times a dot squared is equal to h naught squared times a naught cubed. And the reason there's an a on the left hand side is because on the left-hand side, there is one over a squared, but the epsilon on the right-hand side here comes with uh, one over a cubed. And then I bring the a cubed over the left-hand side. I'm left with a times a dot squared. And then these are the constants that are left on the right-hand side. So now let's take the square root. So a to the one half, a dot is equal to H naught, A naught to the three halves. And if I integrate this, so I'm gonna integrate the left-hand side, A to the one half, DA 
I'm moving the DT to the right hand side and integrating H naught A naught to the three halves DT. Now I'm going to start, I'm going to assume that we can integrate from time equals zero to some later time t. And right for now, I'm going to assume that the size of the universe is zero at time equals zero. And then we'll integrate to some a later on. So evaluating this integral gives me 2 thirds a to the 3 halves is equal to h naught a naught 3 halves times time. Um, I'm just going to rewrite this in terms of a over a naught. And so now we have a over a naught is equal to 3 halves h naught times time to the 2 thirds. All right, so that's that's our expression for A. Apparently A in this einstein de Sitter universe scales as the time to the 2 thirds. All right, and if we take the first time derivative, so we have A dot over A zero is equal to 2 thirds. times 3 halves, h naught, and then all of that to the 2 thirds, and then time to the minus 1 third. So as a is increasing with time, we see that a dot is decreasing with time. a dot is the expansion rate that is decreasing with time. So notice that the scale at time equals zero is equal to zero. And the speed of expansion a dot at zero, that is equal to infinity. Um, we'll also notice that a at infinity, so after infinite time, is equal to infinity. So the universe will continue to expand to infinite size. And a dot, or sorry, let me back up. It was already infinite size, but it will can this expansion, this um, the scale, the spherical scale will expand to infinity. All right, and, and a dot at infinity will be zero. So the expansion will come to a stop after infinite time. And let's go ahead and sketch this out. So we have a over a naught as a function of time. And at t equals zero, it's zero and it expands as t to the two thirds. So this is t to the two thirds. If we plot a dot over a zero versus time at t equals zero, a dot is infinite and then it falls as t to the minus one third. This gives us a definition for, notice that in this model, in this universe, the Einstein de Sitter universe, the scale has size zero at a finite time. This is the definition of a Big Bang. So Big Bang, is A of zero, 
is equal to zero at finite time. In other words, if A at some time is equal to zero and it's at some finite time, in the past, this is a Big Bang. And notice that this also corresponds to a dot zero is equal to infinity. In other words, we have to have a kind of a singularity at the beginning of the universe. We're going to rewrite this um, solution that we derived to give us um, uh, an age of the universe. So we have that a dot over a zero is equal to two thirds. Oops, let's rewrite that. Two thirds times three halves h naught to the two thirds and then T minus one third. If we notice that um, A is equal to, let me scroll up here. All right, so A is equal to this. And with a little bit of inspection, what one will, would notice is that you can rewrite a dot is equal to two thirds times a over time. Anytime um, the scale factor a is a power law of time, then this is going to be true. Then the derivative of that initial function with respect to time is just going to be the function itself divided by time, multiplied by the initial power. All right, so this gives us a dot over a is equal to 2 thirds times 1 over time. And remember that a dot over a is the definition of our, our Hubble parameter. So this is equal to h. Or we have the age is equal to 2 thirds times 1 over the expansion rate at that time. So this would be the age at any time. And this is expansion rate that corresponds to that time. And if we want to evaluate what is the age of the universe today, t0 is equal to 2 thirds times one over h naught. And so in the beginning of the class or near the beginning of the class, we noted that this one over h naught has units of um, time and it corresponded to the age of the universe. Well, it's not exactly the age of the universe, but this parameter, this parameter is a characteristic Hubble time. And the age of the universe is always some multi, some dimensionless factor times one over H naught. And in this particular case, for the Einstein de Sitter universe, that factor happens to be two thirds. For different um, uh, makeup of the composition of the universe, uh, this would be something else. <clears throat> 